Well, Niebaum is an interesting case because he was uh, uh, quite knowledgeable about wine. He was a ship's captain, and he, uh, he became extremely wealthy as he became more mature. He was involved uh, in the uh, fur trade in Alaska, which had recently been sold by Russia to the United States. So even though he was in a position of wealth that he could have bought uh, any or all of the of the great Bordeaux first growths. I mean, he had that kind of wealth. He, uh, at his wife's behest, wanted to stay closer to home. And even in those days, the, 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 the talk about California's Napa Valley of being an extraordinary wine region, of course, even as uh, early as 1840, some extraordinary wines were being produced here and, and people were aware of it. And so Niebaum, uh, decided to not invest in a, in a European vineyard, but rather in an American vineyard in California, in the Napa Valley. And so he selected from the many uh, areas he could choose this uh, spring spa, which was called Inglenook, which means cozy corner. And uh, he, he bought that. Uh, and also it, it was nestled right into the slope of this mountain and he, he was extremely uh, knowledgeable and he understood that uh, this area was the most fertile part of the Napa Valley and to this day it's considered that. And uh, he augmented the purchase with land on either side of it and he made a, uh, a big uh, purchase of over 2,500 acres of land uh, of which much was mountain, but the slope of the mountain uh, known as the Rutherford Bench was, uh, of course, got the drainage of, of the waters coming from the mountain. And so just like what makes the Nile in Egypt so fertile is that inundation where the water comes and then leaves the uh, highest quality of soils. And, and Nibam uh, began his desire to make not a, not a wine just for everyone, but a, a premium luxury wine that could compete with the greatest wines of, uh, of Europe. Yes, that was, I can thank my wife that she, she um, was interested and she said, our, our grapes uh, should all be organic. And I said, well, gee, is that, I've never seen a bottle of wine that says organic, maybe that's not good. She says, no, that's good. <clears throat> and we, we are certified organic for many years. Recently, when, <clears throat> when Philippe explained to us that if we had a winery that had uh, 120 discrete fermenters, which is to say one fermenter for each parcel of our, of our vineyards, that we could keep each parcel separate from the other for at least the first year. Because if you, if you have a great parcel of wine, and you put it in a fermenter, but then as the others come in, you have to put it in a larger holding and, and ultimately combine it with others so that you don't know by the end of the first year where the great wine. So you need, you need if you have 120 discrete parcels, you have to have 120 fermenters. That's a lot of fermenters. Very few wineries have that. But, but, but Philippe said that if you want to bring the notch of Ingle, even one notch better, and only one little notch, not, because you, you pay a lot for just small incremental improvement. But you need a, a winery with 121 fermenters. We have undertaken to build it, and certainly by next year we will have a new winery 